In a world obsessed with beauty, why can't it be society is pretty? The pressure to look perfect can feel overwhelming. This entire summer, I have not left my house. I felt like a reject. I felt disgusting. I've never gone out without makeup on. It could go horribly wrong. Now these daring individuals will attempt to overcome their fears and reclaim their bodies. I want to turn it into something positive. We'll follow every step of their inspirational journeys. I want to face it so I'm no longer scared of it. As eight courageous women reveal their conditions to the world for the very first time. If you obsess about what you look like, then you don't go out there and live your life. And we meet those who've already conquered their insecurities. This is me, this is who I am, and I'm finally loving myself. This is Shake My Beauty. This time on Shake My Beauty, a secret shaver whose facial hair put her through hell. I felt disgusting. Girls aren't supposed to grow facial hair. Why was I? A former bikini model battles body shamers who criticize her post-baby belly. Why would you post this disgusting pic of yourself? It's beauty to me. And the woman fighting to forge a career in fashion after losing her leg. A ragazzo mi ha guardato e ha detto che schifo. E io lì sono rimasta malissimo. Cioè. But first, having lost half her body weight. Angie gained enough body confidence to show her excess skin in public for the very first time. What am I doing? Am I really about to do this? Yeah. Got it, you got it. Thirty-five-year-old Angie is a woman who's living life to the fullest. I really enjoy the outdoors. I love hiking. I love going to the river. I swim, I bask out in the sun, because I love the feel of the sun on my skin. It's my happy boy. Where's your ball, Marley? But just a few years ago, stepping foot outside would have been a daunting prospect. Where's your ball? I did not like big crowds of people, and it always felt like everybody was staring at me. Like, I, I always knew, walking into a room, I was going to be the biggest thing in the room. Growing up, I was always heavy. I had a food addiction. I would eat it as much and as fast as possible. By the time she was a teenager, Angie was morbidly obese. And at her heaviest, she weighed well over 500 pounds. The biggest I ever got, I can't tell you. There weren't scales big enough at the doctor's office to weigh me. My doctor flat out told me that I would need to go to a feed store to get weighed. Angie's sister, Jen, always worried about her. When we were growing up, Angie was kind of um, a loner. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to get dressed up. I didn't know if we would go somewhere, if there would be a chair big enough for me to even sit in, because I couldn't stand for long periods of time. I became pretty much a hermit. When she was younger, I think that it was really hard on her. I don't remember being um, challenge like she was. I wish I could go back and just kind of take it all away. Look how beautiful you are. Aww. This is prom. <laughs> me and me and Jen at prom that she was she came over to see me. Yeah. At prom. I was so glad you went. I was really afraid that you would skip it. When we were growing up, I really felt like I let you down. <laughs> like a hundred times I felt like I let you down. Do you feel like you were supported by your family throughout this time? Yes, 100%. Despite having the support of her family, Angie was fighting a personal battle that began to spiral out of control. I was really starting to hurt, and I didn't want to hurt anymore. I hear that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, I did not <laughs> want to hurt anymore. The depression was... How do I put it? <laughs> the first words that come to mind were an endless pit of despair. Food was my comfort. Food was the one thing that I had that wouldn't, you know, judge me. I was pretty much at a point where I was convinced that it was never gonna get better, that I was too late to help. I did have um, suicidal thoughts. Um, 
wondering, you know, I'm already this far gone. Why, why, why don't I just die? Why doesn't my heart just stop? Having battled depression and suicidal thoughts, by the time she was in her mid-twenties, Angie reached an all-time low, and she was issued with a stark warning. According to the doctors, the way I was going weight-wise, I would be lucky to live past 28. But there was always something in me, always a fire that burned that said, you are more. You can do more. You are more. Be more. And it was just finally paying attention to that voice that helped me break out of it. In a life-changing move, Angie had gastric bypass surgery and took up exercise for the first time ever. I literally thought that this was my last chance to do anything. Ready, go. It was either that or die in my mind. And I didn't want to die. I am now 253, so I have pretty much lost about 250 to 40-ish pounds, give or take. There you go, girl. We're moving. Good job. Angie's a regular at the gym, but working hard to lose weight was only the first step. What she faced next would prove to be an even bigger challenge. I first noticed the excess skin pretty soon after um, the surgery. You can see, you know, like the muscle in it now, but they were really this big and bigger. They're like, this one used to be filled up. And even now it's like extra, <laughs> extra skin going on right there. So I can pull it like that. No amount of exercise will help Angie to lose her excess skin. And while she can now bear to show her arms, she's still not comfortable with other parts of her body. I don't like the way my legs look because there is so much extra skin there. And I do still try to hide it. I still very much wear pants. I don't wear shorts. And that might be, a, no, that is another reason why I do wear a long skirt. My brain starts going. Is that person judging me? What are, what are they thinking? Very much, my mind goes a million miles a minute and always thinks the worst of everything. Attracting humiliating stares from strangers is one thing, but Angie still struggles to look at her own body. I want to face it, so I'm no longer scared of it. Having shied away from showing off her body for her entire adult life, Angie is ready to face her biggest fear. So she has set herself an extraordinary challenge. Have you ever seen me in a bikini? No. We grew up with a swimming pool, but I have never seen you in a swimming suit. What would you say if I told you that I am going to, and I want to, be in a bikini in public? So Angie's challenge is to wear a bikini for the first time in her life in just three days. This is gonna be really, really hard for you. I know it will. Um, this makes me very nervous because I am very self-conscious about my lower half. It's where I keep most of my weight, you know, genetics. And what I think this will do is help me shed that mental Barrier. Absolutely. I think a total removal block. Yeah. And you should really go for it. <laughs> Invite like lots of people. <laughs> Invite all the people. Right. Oh. Let's all go swimming. Let's all go <laughs> swimming. Let's all but yeah, that's one of the things that I, I still struggle with. I think it's a really good idea. Okay. So the plan is to go to my favorite place in San Marcos, the river, and be the most vulnerable I'm ever gonna be in recent memory by wearing a bikini out in public. It's nerve wracking. <laughs> there might be a little terror. What am I doing? Am I really about to do this? While Angie is contemplating the challenge ahead, in Virginia, Nova has already faced a challenge of her own. The condition I have is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, which polycystic ovaries, it means you have a bunch of cysts all over your ovaries. 
It can cause infertility. I don't have a period. I haven't had one in 10 years. I grow the excess facial hair, the body hair. It depends on the person and um, the specific amount of hormonal imbalance, but this is what it causes me. <laughs> Dealing with the condition as a 26-year-old adult is one thing, but Nova was just a child when her symptoms began. When I was 12 and the facial hair started growing, I just thought I was weird. I was completely miserable. You know, I felt like a reject. I felt disgusting, like girls aren't supposed to grow facial hair. Why was I at such a young age? So I felt really, really awful about it. As a young teenager, uh, when this first started happening, um, I did get bullied. I had some kid, you know, commenting about how I was going to have more facial hair than him. And there were girls who would make fun of my body hair. I was, you know, I was afraid to go to sleepovers. I was afraid of people touching my face, finding out that I had this issue at all. I shaved from the age of 12 until the age of 26, so it was very much a part of my normal routine to just keep doing it. I saw no reason to stop. As an adult, Nova's in a loving relationship, but even with her partner by her side, she was still crippled by insecurity. That looks good. I first met my partner at a comic convention. I was in a panel for a fashion show, and she was in the front row, and. We kind of locked eyes, and I thought she looked really cool. And we kind of ran into each other after that and started talking. We just kind of hit it off from there and started dating after about a month, I think. <laughs> As I got older and I made more friends who I knew are, you know, good and accepting people, and, you know, I was with my partner for, you know, more and more time, um, I still continued to hide the facial hair, um, the body hair and everything, just because I personally felt disgusted by it. I wouldn't let my partner touch my face at all. I was very self-conscious about anyone touching my face at all or any of my body, really. I just felt like people would be disgusted in the way that I was personally. I didn't have any negative feelings because it's not something you can help, but like it can be treated, but it's, it's nothing really hurtful or bad besides the cysts. Oh, they're, oh, they're green tea gingerbread. Oh, that sounds so good. With the support of her partner, one year ago, Nova made a radical choice. I decided to just make the leap and start growing it out. I, I wanted to do No Shave November specifically because, you know, it does benefit a cause. It raises awareness for men's cancers. I might as well do it in a period of time where it benefits somebody just besides me. When my hair first started growing, I felt rebellious, so I was terrified. But at the same time, I felt kind of like increasingly more liberated from my own personal hell, basically. Um, I put myself through so much torture and now I'm finally letting go of it. So it felt terrifying, but incredible at the same time. It was neat seeing how fast it grew in and how full, um, but also seeing how her confidence grew over the course of the month. I think it's cute. I think it suits her. <laughs> they called it a cinnamon beard earlier. It's a cinnamon beard and it's really soft. <laughs> That's gay. She's still Nova. She's still my, my girlfriend. Nova's whole life has been completely transformed by her bold decision. I do love it and I love, you know, I love it on myself. I love how it looks. Um, it's interesting. It keeps my face warm when it's freezing. It's been a blessing for me. Now that I've done this, now that I've finally let go of that hatred and everything, I feel like, you know, I can do more in the world. I can do more to help people. I can do more to help myself. I can make other people happy. I can make myself happy. And it's not just changed her own life. It's it's mind-blowing, the response that I've gotten. People needed to see someone who has an issue like they have. So it's been a really rewarding experience. 
sharing everything on social media really did help with my confidence. I've gotten so many people who have messaged me personally, you know, not just commenting, but a private chat with me to tell me that they were really grateful that I've posted stuff like this because they've been afraid of their hair, which is silly if you think about it. You shouldn't be afraid of something that occurs naturally on your body. You don't have to hide it. And I understand the pain that you're going through. I understand the hurt and I understand like the anger towards yourself and the self-hatred, but you don't have to be that way. You can let go of it and you can learn to love yourself. You're not alone and you're beautiful with the body you have. For Nova, learning to love herself for who she is was a huge step. And in Texas, Angie's still coming to terms with her body. The body that in just two days' time, she'll be showing off to the world in her first ever bikini. A terrifying prospect. I'm very much doing it for me and facing a fear. This is a stupid, irrational fear. And it's allowing me to face it head on, take the bull by the horn, so to speak, and just go at it. Ahead of the challenge, Angie is visiting a surgeon to talk about the excess skin that's impossible for this gym bunny to shift through exercise alone. I can actually tell you the exact moment where I'm like, oh my gosh, this extra skin's gotta go. It was uh, my first year of working out. I was putting away a 45 pound plate and my belly skin caught under and it pinched and I'm like, ow. And okay, um, it was a lot more loud than that. <laughs> Having already had one operation to remove the skin on her stomach to help make her workouts easier, and she wants to see if further surgery would be of any benefit. We are on our way to go to a uh, plastic surgeon for a consult to see what we can do about the extra skin that I have. My extra skin gets in the way, so it's gotta go. Um, it would be doing it for me, not for society. It just gets in my way with my fitness and my jujitsu. Hi. Hello. Hi, Angie. Hi, how are you? I'm Dr. Holzman. It's nice a pleasure to meet you. Too. How can I help you? What are you coming to see me for? Well, I've had significant weight loss. Okay. And a couple years ago, I had um, the skin from my midsection and back removed. Okay. So tell me about your weight loss. How much weight have you lost? Um, I've lost about, let me see, I was about 240, 50 pounds. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I've yeah, lost a linebacker. <laughs> So I've already had one skin removal surgery. Got it. I am looking to have the extra skin on my arms removed. When I'm in the weight room and I'm putting weights up, you know, it's not comfortable when this pinches between a couple plates. Why don't we do a physical exam right. and kind of see what you got and then we'll go from there. Let's look at your arms. Pop your arm out there. Okay. Put all this right here, all this stuff goes away. And you've done a great job at losing weight and now you're paying the price, which is you have all this extra skin. Yeah. So the surgery involves an incision right here. Mm -hmm. I cut down to the muscle, but not in it. I come down, I lift up, and then I cut, and I make it cut, cut, mm -hmm. cut, 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 as tight as I can make it. While there is still some fat left in my arms, uh -huh. it's nothing compared to what's in my legs. Okay. So I'm not sure how that factors into it, because I, I know that I do need to lose more in my legs before we can even talk about my legs. Unfortunately, you know, your thighs, it's a different, mm -hmm. you know, a different thing. We can look at it another time. Right. You can't tell your body, you know, why don't you lose just, just lose it in my legs. Just lose it on your legs. Yeah. So you can't do, you know, they call it spot reduction. So surgery on her arms would make working out easier, but it's not an option on her lower half the area Angie hides the most. Accepting herself for how she looks now is crucial. My legs are still where I carry most of my weight. And so one of my biggest fears is when I finally do wear a bikini for the first time that I'm gonna be met with just looks of disgust and judgment. With less than 48 hours before her bikini challenge, 
Will Angie be brave enough to be her own? I'm nervous. What am I getting myself into? Am I ready? I don't know. Angie is not alone in her fear of wearing a bikini. An astonishing 82% of women say they don't feel confident in one. And for this mother of three from Arizona, getting back into hers was a bigger challenge than she'd ever imagined. Before I had my babies, I was actually a bikini competitor. So I had a pretty nice physique. I literally had my best body ever, and I got pregnant with twins. My last bump photo was so big from the twins that it sagged over <laughs> my belly. On the day of my induction, I was 38 weeks, and after laboring for almost 24 hours, I ended up receiving an emergency C-section. I was honestly the most scared I've ever been in my entire life. My babies came out healthy and happy, and I just couldn't be happier about that. She might have safely delivered two healthy babies, but Kylie was about to discover a different kind of pain. I think like any mom, I struggled with body image issues after giving birth. I was honestly scared to look at the scars at first. I tried to keep the bandages on as long as possible. And when I first came out of the hospital, my belly still looked almost six months pregnant. It was very intimidating for me. Kylie had been documenting her pregnancy on social media, but never expected the intense backlash she got when she shared a post-birth photo. It's not sexy to have these scars hanging out. Some people had some comments like, oh hell no, nah, this is the saggiest belly I've ever seen. Why would you post this disgusting pic of yourself and think that others are impressed? Yikes, we're trying to forget that we saw this. With Kylie already feeling the pressure to look good, negative comments from outsiders made life even more difficult. I think the lowest point for me, confidence-wise, was a few months down the road when I'm still seeing the separation of my abs. The separation of these abdominal muscles is known as diastasis recti. It's common after childbirth and affects around two thirds of women with varying severity. There's abs on this side and abs on this side, but there's no way to bring them close together. And, there, and you can see there's kind of like no real like fat there, it's just all loose skin. The scars are still there, the stretch marks are still there. And knowing and having to accept that that's just going to be my new reality. It's very difficult to, as a fitness professional, come back post-pregnancy and there's a lot of expectation for people to see you bounce back right away. But Kylie was determined not to bow to other people's expectations. Everyone struggles with something. So my scars are nothing compared to the scars of people who have really suffered. It's impossible to look at my three sons and not feel proud that I was able to carry them to full term. That is what I have to carry in my mind every time I look down and I see the scars and I see the stretch marks. That scar was able to give life. So it's beauty to me. Far from swearing off social media, Kylie decided to challenge the expectations put upon women's post-baby bodies. And in the months after giving birth, she defied her critics and continues to share the truth online. Putting yourself out there on social media is very, very scary. I'm super proud of Kylie because she's so open. It'd be scary to be that open to all these people. She's just completely honest about who she is, what she's going through. 
And I think that encouraged her to do it more. And I think that really has encouraged her to be more positive about it um, to others and, and with herself. One day, I just let it all hang out. And it really showed off the reality of what motherhood is um, and what it really looks like. Are you ready? Yeah. We're gonna do the jumpy jacks? Okay. <laughs> Kylie confronted her own body confidence issues, but can Angie? In just two days' time, she's going to be wearing a bikini for the first time ever, revealing her excess skin to the world. This scares me, and it all boils down to what other people think. And then I ask the question of, well, why am I scared of what other people think? But before she can bear all in a bikini, she's going to have to buy one, something she's never done before. The thought of being in a bikini just kind of sends my mind through a loop because I am very insecure, very cover everything up. Sister Jen and friend Lynn have come along for moral support. You've been thinking about actual styles of bathing suits yeah. that you're interested in? You know, when you think of a bikini, you think of something that has less cotton in it than a pill bottle. I've always worked so hard to cover my lower half. I don't want to hide anymore. Mm. You know? And you shouldn't. And that, that's pretty much, and, and it terrifies me that I'm, I'm basically going to be vulnerable to complete strangers. Assistance okay. help. I've never been here before, much less bought a swimsuit or a bikini or anything like that. So yeah. I'm like, I got no clue what to do, no clue what to expect. I don't even right. know what size I am. This whole two piece thing is a little um, scary. Yeah, scary. The thought of wearing a bikini terrifies me. Like, I could wear one piece all day long. Yeah. You know, I could wear, you know, something like that all day long because it still kind of hides things. Right. With a bikini, I'm hiding nothing. Blue is my favorite color, so I'm like, whatever I can do to stay in a comfort zone. Okay. And if color's it, color's it. That's cute. Yeah, so we do have some blue, so we've got- Blue is definitely. Something like this. This is a Maji suit. It's mm -hmm. very popular. That's very cute. cute. And they've got, this is very popular now, is the high-waisted. Extra large. Extra large is typically yes. what I wear in my pants. Okay. I think mm -hmm. that one might fit, that's all. Choosing a bikini is one thing, but trying it on in the full glare of a changing room mirror is quite another. Where's the top? Let's see how this goes. Here. Good luck, Angie. Oh my gosh, she's, she's braver than I am. I won't even try on a two piece, seriously. She's jumping in the deep end, literally. My back is to the mirror. I, I have not seen me yet. All right, I think I'm ready. It's time for Angie to see herself in a bikini for the first time ever. Oh, holy crap! So there's not a lot of left to the imagination anymore. <laughs> so it's like, wow, okay. There's not as much fear as there was. I have never worn this less of clothing in my life. And it's still kind of weird because I'm like, I'm looking at it and my butt, and I'm like, there's still just so much in the legs. And you know, so like I look at my top part and I'm like, yeah, I'm rocking. And I look at the front and I'm like, yeah, I'm rocking. And then I turn around and I'm like, I'm also rocking. And just keeping her bikini body hidden from her friends until the big public reveal tomorrow. But the shop assistants can't resist a sneaky peek. All right, all this, and I just pulled one. <laughs> yeah, <look at> <laughs> I really like this one. I, I it really looks good on you. Thank you. Yeah. you. See, I told you I'd have some taste. Yeah. 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 It goes with your hair. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
this way out of my comfort zone. This yeah. is like my comfort yeah. zone is somewhere in Austin right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But this is this is the one. As long as you like right. it and you feel comfortable in it, and you're. I do. Yeah. I like it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it. I just like it. Yeah. I just really like no, it. No, it looks good. It does. <laughs> That's, That's so yeah. cool. Thank you. Yeah. You look Thank amazing, you. girl. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'll get right. real close now. Okay. <laughs> awesome. That's cool. She does look amazing. I'm glad she feels very confident. I'm, I'm just very excited for her. Her first bikini is in the bag, but will she hold her nerve tomorrow when her newfound body positivity is put to the ultimate test in much more public, much more open space? Congratulations. Thank you. Work it, girl. Today was very much a mental first. I faced a challenge. I never really thought of myself as the person who would do this. Yeah, it's, I still have insecurities. Accepting her new body unashamedly has also been Kiara's challenge. At just 12 years old, she was involved in a serious road accident. Stavo tornando a casa dopo un, un saggio di danza di de, de alcune amiche mie e quando tornavo stavo in motorino dietro il mio attuale ragazzo e quando stavo passando davanti a un incrocio una macchina è andata a girato in contromano, non, non ci ha visto e ci ha preso sulla parte sinistra de, del motorino. Ho iniziato a urlare, mi sono ritrovata a gambe incrociate L'elicottero mi ha portato all'ospedale a Roma, al Gemelli. Per andare al Gemelli con l'elicottero mi sono guardata un attimo il piede, c'era troppo sangue e avevo già, avevo già capito. Ricordo tutto, non ho perso coscienza fino alla sala operatoria. Il dolore penso lancinante, cioè non era troppo, troppo grande. Cioè, il dolore forse più grosso che abbia mai, mai provato. Ho fatto 12 ore di, di intervento e hanno dovuto amputare il piede. With her leg amputated below the knee, Chiara now had to learn how to walk with a prosthetic. E per camminare ancora dopo, dopo l'amputazione 9 mesi. It also took time to learn to deal with the negative comments. Stavo passando in sedia a rotelle e avevo ovviamente la, la gamba senza protesi e niente. E un ragazzo mi ha guardato e ha detto che schifo. E io, io lì ci sono rimasta malissimo. Cioè... But what Chiara thought was an end to life as she knew it turned out to be the beginning of an exciting new chapter. La protesi me l'ha progettata una ragazza di Campobasso in Molise a in Italia e un giorno insomma mi ha scritto e mi ha detto di questo progetto che aveva di fare questa protesi molto decorata e molto anche visibile insomma e poi di fare un servizio fotografico e da lì poi è partito tutto. It was the photos of Chiara slaying in her crystal encrusted prosthetic that caught the attention of international modeling scouts. Se dalla, dalla prima volta, dalla prima esperienza, dato che mi sono trovata bene, anche è stato bellissimo perché... Il primo servizio fotografico stavo lì con la protesi nuova, con la protesi tutta sbrilluccicosa, con quelli che mi facevano le foto e dopo, dopo due anni all'incidente è stato, è stato figo e quindi da lì... Da lì alla fine mi è venuto un po' spontaneo, cioè ho visto ho rotto il ghiaccio, ho visto la prima esperienza, allora ho capito che, che potevo farlo. <laughs> Today I'm shooting uh, with Misguided e I'm so excited to do, to do this today. It's so cold, <laughs> I'm not used to this cold. Il primo photoshoot che ho fatto è stato due anni fa, più o meno, quindi in tutto ho fatto Penso 10 servizi fotografici. La migliore esperienza forse proprio questa qua a Londra. Mi piace di più di un photoshoot, sì, la parte prima, ecco, trucco e parrucco. 
mi sento un po' forse coccolata quando faccio le foto perché c'è chi fa il trucco, i capelli, poi tutte le fotocamere rivolte verso di me, quindi sì. No, non ho mai pensato che una persona come me potrebbe essere una modella perché penso quando ho fatto l'incidente non, non avrei mai pensato neanche di diventarlo. That That's is, my favorite. That is my favorite shot as well. Oh my god. That is my favorite shot. I think what makes Cara such a good model is her confidence. She doesn't let her disability hold her back. This is beautiful. Angel. Yes, 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 yes. Let me see. Yes. Oh. Do you see what I see now about you? <laughs> This is why when I first saw you, I knew. <laughs> Look, I, I have to know, but I knew. I haven't seen a model like you in a long time. You better invite me to your mansion when you get that mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I think without a shadow of a doubt, one of the London agencies is going to take her. Certo, sono... Sì, c'è cioè un risvolto positivo perché sono cresciuta, insomma, so, sono cresciuta e soprattutto vedo la vita in modo completamente diverso, mentre prima magari le piccole cose o qualsiasi cosa, anzi, no, non sembrava tanto, sembrava quasi scontata. Mi sento molto, molto più forte di prima. Allora, sguardi negativi dalle persone, sì, forse anche, anche spesso, vabbè, ma... No, non gli do tanto peso perché se, se ecco una persona guarda male o, o fa commenti negativi il problema è suo, non è assolutamente mio. Sì, molte cose non le posso fare, però ci, diciamo, mi ci avvicino molto. Cioè sono, in realtà sono un po' che penso, le cose non posso fare. Chiara transformed tragedy into triumph through self-acceptance. But can Angie do the same? Having lost a massive 250 pounds, Angie has been left with a lot of loose skin. Ready, go! She's bought her first ever bikini. I have never worn this less of clothing in my life. And now the day has finally arrived when she will bear her excess skin in public for the first time in her life. Still in the bag, so, like, out of sight, out of mind. Like, look at this. There is no hiding. There is no hiding in this. See, this is where the nervousness comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get all talkative with the nervousness. Angie's mom has come to help her get ready. Mom, you want to brush my hair? You used to be the only one who can brush your hair. That's true. This is the big day, the, the very big day. I am. I'm trying to put it in the back of my mind because if I think about it for too long, then the nerves just start to get to me. And I don't want to let my fear rule my life or the decisions that I make in my life. And by facing this, this, this very scary, big thing, I mean, wearing a bikini in public, who does that? I mean, when they don't have the perfect body. With her bikini on, the time has finally come for Angie to head to the location where she will face her deepest fears. This challenge of, uh, that she's about to do, uh, I personally would never do. Revealing herself out in public, she's brave. Oh, she's so brave because I know how society is. You know, I can remember seeing how people would stare at her. People are not gonna like maybe what they see. Quite frankly, most people would find your legs very, very hard to look at. And they do. Yeah. I mean, that's... It, and I find them hard to look at, okay? I'm involuntarily showing off something that I think is my biggest imperfection. Not even... Yeah. <laughs> What are you hoping will come out of the day we're doing? Honestly, yeah. I'm really hoping it'll really help me accept me. Because <laughs> as much as I do have a self-acceptance, 
there's one thing I want to change. And if I want to change it, do I really accept it? Angie has chosen a popular local beauty spot to make her bikini debut. And friends and family are here to greet her, including gym buddy, Josh. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you I was kind of terrified? Well, that's okay. It's okay to be terrified, but once you like start doing it, you're gonna be like, this is, this is nothing. And you're gonna be like, show the world that you are who you are. This is the moment that all of Angie's hard work has been building towards. I have always tried to hide my leg. And now not only am I going to be uncovering everything for everybody. I can't hide from it either. I am, I'm terrified right now. And now there's no turning back. Some of my worst fears, the things that really are that gut-wrenching terror. It would be, I have always dreaded seeing the looks of disgust on people's face when they look at me. Having people see what I've been hiding my entire life. Ready for that? For you? <laughs> for you? Here go! <laughs> <laughs> She looked beautiful when she took it all off. I don't even know what she was worried about. I'm super proud of her. I, I don't think I've, I've ever seen her, like, just literally dive in. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. Super cool to see her out here in front of both people that she knows and doesn't know to kind of take on this challenge of the, of the body image. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of her. I am so proud of her for overcoming her fear and taking the next step in accepting herself as she is. It was really inspiring. I'm having troubles with the same type of thing. Super self-conscious. It's definitely gonna help me. She's really inspiring to me. Now that the big reveal is done and over with, it feels like an, a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. A sense of freedom and a sense of acceptance of myself that I, I didn't have before. Um, it was amazing. Just the, the love and support of my friends and my family, of my community. Perfect! Has helped me to face head on help me to deal with and really just accept that I am beautiful. <laughs> I am. I love me, all of me, as I am. The goal is always, always to be better, do better, and improve. There's nothing physical that's gonna hold you back from achieving your dreams. It's all in your mind, all in your head. Sky is the limit.